I guess we should start with the uh, current news, a new interest rate hike from the Bank of Canada. Uh, is that a surprise to you at all? A little bit of a surprise. I don't know that it's really relevant at this point in time. I think the Bank of Canada wants to feel they're doing something um, and it kind of looks somewhat decisive, I guess. Um, I don't know that it's really that important and that critical or even that necessary at this point. The challenge the banks, the central banks, the Federal Reserve and, and the Bank of Canada have is they're trying to tighten the system down, induce some pain, get the economy to slow down, to contain inflation, mm. uh, which is a little bit like operating without anesthetic. But on the other hand, you have governments on the fiscal side just flushing the system with money and spending money. So you got your foot in the brake and the foot in the gas at the same time, and, and, and it's not working. Mm. Uh, inflation, markets will tend to correct themselves over time. People will change spending habits or ease off in their spending. The prices are going up too quickly. Um, I did a paper at the graduate level in economics. There's not a business cycle that has not been exacerbated by uh, central bank activities. Mm, interesting. So uh, in this case, I guess their primary goal at this point is to try to reduce inflation. You're saying that, that that's going to be a challenge for them as long as governments keep spending money the way they're doing. Well, they're, they're pulling in opposite directions. And, and uh, the government is trying to ease any pain on people out there. And, and I'm not totally convinced that interest rates are the best way to do it. If you really want to slow the economy down, the government has to stop giving money away and spending money and forcing the Bank of Canada to print more money. Right. Um, and that's the thing. You don't have to make everybody suffer. And by the way, if you increase mortgages, for example, I talked to a client recently uh, and she had a mortgage that was $3,000 a month. It's now gone to $4,000 a month. How is that easing inflation for that person? It's not. Right, right. It's just uh, increasing their cost of living for sure. So uh, from your perspective, then, uh, uh, are, are we, is this going to have, you, you seem to suggest that this will not have the impact that the Bank of Canada desires. Is it going to have a negative impact, though, on, uh, on future spending habits or uh, avoiding a recession, those kinds of things? I don't, I don't know that it's going to be significant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're at a level of been four, four and a half to four and three quarters. Uh, the big, the big increases have already occurred, and the impact of those increases has already happened. Mm -hmm. uh, this is sort of uh, uh, gilding the lily, if you will, uh, after the fact. I, I don't think it's critical either way. Uh, but you don't avoid recessions by increasing interest rates. You create recessions, which is the purpose of increasing interest mm -hmm. rates, and that's why I alluded to the phrase. Uh, uh, operating without anesthetic. There are other ways to contain inflation, you know, cut payments to special interest groups or or, or the professional victim groups or, or any of these. Ease off on some of your programs. Um, one of the big inflationary things, like it or not, everything getting in the, the date of climate change is climate change. Tremendously inflationary. Mm. But nobody makes that connection because it doesn't fit with the narrative. Right, right. One of the things you've been saying for months on my show is that uh, you were optimistic when I was kind of uh, talking down at, to the idea that we were going to be in a recession. So far, you've been more correct than I have been. There has been no recession. Is that uh, the way you see things in the future, too? Well, well, timing is everything, of course, Tony. So don't consider yourself wrong so far. I mean, <laughs> I'm right so far. Uh, there's a lot of professional doomsters out of there, out there. And, and I mean, I, I have a friend of mine who's an economist and he's predicted uh, 12 of the last two recessions. And you know, so, <laughs> so in actual fact, you know, numbers can prove anything. There's other things going on that are muting effects here, though. Mm. Uh, I think I think basically corporations are disconnecting, the economy is disconnecting from government. Government, whether it be in Canada and the United States, is viewed as a little bit of a soap opera, disconnected from economic growth, really interested in just buying votes by just splashing money around at anybody uh, who's upset about something. So it's it's, uh, it's 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 really the economy is looking at the economy, and business seems to be doing well. Uh, job creation is still there, primarily in the United States. Uh, so it's going to be a while yet before we get into a full blown recession. Right. I'm not even sure that we will.